Hello everyone, this is Pino Trogo again from San Francisco State University and this is the information design data visualization class. Um, this is going to be just a little uh, showcase of the work from the last 10 years from the class. It's not, um, it's not super curated, it's just uh, showing some of the work. And I'm going to start actually with the most recent work, which is um, some uh, booklets and posters from last spring, that is spring 2020. And uh, this is a, a booklet that shows, compares COVID with some other natural disasters. So this is actually about uh, five by seven. Uh, this is a double page spread. Um, should be a line in the middle. And um, looking at what earth, earth disasters can do, fire disasters, water disasters, and air disasters. So I will just go through them uh, fairly quickly. Uh, just to say that in this particular case, it's nicely designed and, and, and nicely everything is clean and simple in a way. Uh, using a scatter plot to show uh, fires and acres burnt and hurricanes and tsunamis and the last was the uh, virus so this is last spring and we're now in November so things are of course um, much worse already, but these bubbles show how many people died in each particular uh, epidemic in the past. And here's a little tree map um, with, um, again, the different epidemics, COVID being the worst. And these colors should match these colors right here for the uh, for the uh, bar chart. And these are the credits. And this other one is actually a poster. The format is 24 by 36. And this is also about COVID. And the, uh, oops. Uh, the thing I want to say here is it's just quite simple. And of course, the graph that shows the, um, Let's see. Yeah, cases in New York City up to a certain date. I'm not sure which exactly um, is what creates this nice divide between the left and the right uh, part of the poster. Um, I just want to say something also about how the graphs are not um, straight out of the programs that he used. Um, but they're a little bit refined in Illustrator. Uh, I noticed this little nice way of showing the different steps by simply putting a white line on top of the uh, on top of the bars instead of having lines underneath, which he does in this other example. Um, when there is no room to um, fit the labels, you can put them at 45 degrees. This is a little bit more, but um, it works pretty well. Let's quickly look at these color plots. Comparing days that people didn't do anything about. <laughs> Let's see, this one. Oh, stay at home dates when that, when that went into effect and the number of deaths. Okay. So this one is about immigration backlog. And um, again, it's quite simple in a way, but it's super well organized. And again, the extreme parts of some of the graphs, um, you know, frame in this particular case, another graph, which happens to be a map. Um, and, um, yeah, and obviously there is a grid. Uh, the grid is broken sometimes. This right column right here is a little bit wider than this right column here on the right, but still, um, it still works. Uh, 
always when possible sort the data because that's the most important thing in these charts below here uh, it's not sorted because it's actually by year uh, although in some cases the sorting corresponds to the chronological as well another poster this might have been 30 by no uh, yes 30 by 40 inches and it's about youtube and it's basically a simple arrangement of all the statistical charts with a lot of uh, rulers used horizontal rulers vertical rulers and a lot of uh, typography to show you know all that information um, so of course typography is very very important uh, some of these posters don't have a specific angle you might say or a specific um, what would you call a characterization you know they're just pretty much matter of fact now this one is made to look like a newspaper um, and, um, and and this is something that applies to the wildcard project where we try to see if we can use particular devices particular genres particular looks and fit them to our purposes so that they somewhat recall again a different different format a different genre and it makes for the piece to be more interesting so even though most of these projects are posters um, some of the some of the key principles and, and ways of looking at them of course apply to any any uh, data visualization project even though of course these are print um, and there is no motion in them um, but nevertheless I think we can we can transfer some of this information to motion uh, animated data visualization if we if we had to um, a very nice organized six column grid which turns into three column grids at times and all the charts let's see if we can zoom in um, are quite clean and usually sorted as well um, this one about rents in san francisco oh, i forget what years this Tell, but anyway, this might have been 2019. Um, this was trying to use a, um, a, uh, a tree map to show the different uh, districts in terms of rentals. And the color also is the ones that are more expensive, the darker. It's a little bit like a cartogram, which you might have seen during the elections recently, where the um, with the map of the United States is according to the electoral um, votes of each state. Each one is a little square. Each vote is a little square. Um, okay. A rather complex one about barrier reefs and normally i'm not too crazy about lots of background colors and fills but in this case i think it works because it's about water it's about oceans so the um, the background doesn't doesn't get in the way um, in this case right here it might it is a little bit tricky because the color vibrates a little bit um, one about the campfire which until i guess this year was one of the worst fires but not anymore um, and um, 
what's nice about this poster is that the uh, there is a chronological sort of thread that connects all the different graphs um, and those are the days that go the run vertically down the length of the poster um, when the fire started until I guess it was controlled um, and so the different variables the different the different graphs so they look at they're all tied together by this um, daily daily tick marks uh, it's nice how the also the uh, key to how dangerous the air quality was um, works out in this particular graph as well with the scale is in fact the air quality on the left Uh, one about California drought and the reservoirs and how much they were filled um, is indicated by this gar bar graphs, which is really nice. So the bar graph, the, the height indicates how tall, meaning the quantity that could fit in the reservoir. And the shaded area, of course, is how much there was. The one thing that unfortunately is missing here is little dots on the map to show you know, where these particular lakes and reservoirs are. Uh, otherwise, it's pretty nice. Um, what about the Port of Oakland? Um, here, it's just a slight trying to connect the shape of the containers, which is basically these big rectangles, these big cubical boxes, to the layout of the poster itself. So it's a... Uh, it's strong, but I think it works. And the fact that the rectangles don't look pictorially like the actual boxes um, leaves it a little bit, you know, not so obvious. Uh, the evolution of the iPhone and the Macintosh, and this is comparing um, the price on the right and the units sold of the iPhone on the left. And I think the uh, stack bar is showing, if I recall right, it's showing the profit that, um, that each product made. I can't quite remember, I think that's what it was. But uh, And there is a timeline also the, uh, going down the middle, which is, which is also quite nice. Okay, um, this is a nice illustration quality, which is given by the um, the crumpled paper. And I'm not exactly sure um, why the student did that, but um, it was uh, a scan of crumpled paper that was then reproduced, um, and also a scan of these ripped pieces of paper that was again rephotographed and and placed on the uh, on the poster. Uh, just really, really nice way of using a simple element of the ripped paper and using it throughout for, for the typography. What's nice about this poster too is the contrast between this very large map and then this very detailed uh, columns with all the different graphs. In a way, a completely different one, almost opposite in its sort of simplicity and and bare bones, one might say. Um, although maybe that's a bad a bad um, analogy for for a poster about ob obesity. But um, anyway, yeah, sometimes very simple elements can work um, to uh, make you know a visual a visual point. Um, a little odd, uh, you know, in the head here is actually a scale when you look down and you look at the at the number, but it kind of works because of the shape. So um, it's a little strange, but it works. Uh, okay, I guess I shouldn't talk about favorites, but <laughs> I'm going to anyway. Uh, this is one of my favorite posters from yeah the past 10 years and it's because it's almost like a, 
I don't know, it's almost like a, a, a concrete poem, which means that the graphs really embody the information, meaning the bars become both a decorative element in this very simple grid. Um, the original idea, I think, came from trying to depict, uh, because it's about ho housing mainly, trying to depict a building with its windows, you know, maybe more of an office building. But anyway, it evolved into this very simple matrix, which shows the years across, so it's a timeline, and the uh, bar charts up and down. Um, and you can see that some things have not changed much, like the population and the number of housing units, and yet the rents, of course, have gone up. Um, you see the high number at the at the bottom here. One question would be: Should one have the the uh, you know the more recent date at the top? I'm not sure. Um, so you can see how the graph itself becomes the poster and how there's nothing but the graph and yet it's very, very um, successful because it's, it's so focused. Um, and this is an eight, grid, eight column grid. Uh, one on the Syrian uh, migrant crisis. Um, photography can work very well too, as you can see here. Uh, I should say that I'm, well, I'm very traditional, I'm very old school. And so in all these projects, I really try to always push, okay, you have to have a title. And usually that title is bigger than everything else. And you have to have usually an area at the top because usually that's what one, where, where one looks first. Um, and then it goes down to, you know, more details. But um, you have to have a focus and the focus usually comes with the title at first. Um, a very strong illustration wise poster but again it does use some of the illustra oops, some of the illustrative elements um, and turn them into graphs so actually this bar on the right here this large graphic is actually a tree map so each rectangle shows a particular uh, yeah the type of e-ways computers monitors etc and um, but then should put a little a little key inside to understand um, to understand what the tree map represents uh, a giant parking ticket this was about parking in San Francisco and I remember the biggest struggle I had in this particular case was convincing the student to make the poster actually a different size than the standard format that we were using. We were using, I think, 30 by 40, which is fairly squarish or, you know, a particular standard rectangle, but the parking ticket is more narrow. So we made this a little more narrow. We might have made it, I don't know, uh, 25 by, let's see, 30 by 40. So maybe it's 20 by 40 or 25 by 40. Uh, and also the graphic is very uh, spare. Uh, and again, this is trying to replicate the cheap, you know, inkjet printers that uh, Miller, Miller guys use. Um, one about the use of express lanes and um, bar charts, you know, on the road. I just want to point out one little thing if I can, oops, and that is uh, that sometimes when you have um, things at an angle, you can play with the angle of the italic type. And I'm going, to, I'm going to try to see if I can show that. Um, let's see if I can rotate. Oops. Yeah, so what um, what you can do is look at the um, look at the angle of your of your design. So in this case, it's this particular graph, 
Now, if you notice, that's also the angle perhaps of your, um, of your tie face when you use italics. So what you can do is you can um, make your graphs actually match that angle of your, um, of your italic type. Um, and that just makes it for a really nice, um, yeah, correspondence between the, uh, between the, uh, the graphic elements and the typographic elements. Um, let's see if I can get out of this. Let's see. Okay. All right, moving along. Okay, another really elaborate one. Um, oops, the mouse has a life of its own. Um, and um, this one about general patent was a World War II, I guess, big shot. Um, it has a timeline, a lot of information, a lot of events, lots of maps. Um, the one thing that's nice in this poster, there is no real data per se, but um, it's mainly a timeline. Oh, here's a little, a little, a little bar chart. Um, what this person did in connecting all the different parts together was using these one, two, three, and four numbers for the battles and matching those in the timeline, in the text, and pretty much everywhere else. Um, and this I used to call it the Kanji West when I didn't know where who Kanye West was, and I couldn't even pronounce it because I thought I, it had the J instead of a Y. But anyway, this was really nice because I saw it the other day in the portfolio night that we had um, via Zoom where um, one of the students mentioned the information design class and showed this poster that was done way back. And now it turns out that he's actually working for Kanye West, um, which is pretty neat. Um, doing motion graphics and uh, yeah, music, illustrations, and other things. Uh, this poster about Disney um, has a lot of information, a lot of, uh, this is I think a, uh, it's a timeline. Yes, right here, 214, 13, 12 and the uh, gross probably of each movie and the characters from the movies. And he owns uh, that to uh, another poster that was done earlier, which I shared. And anytime a student picks up on an older project, that's okay, as long as you credit and you, and you recognize you know, what somebody else did before. So we'll see, we'll see another poster about Pixar later on that uses this concept of placing the characters on the bars. Um, Let's just zoom in to take a little detail. Um, forget what the uh, the little tick marks are. Um, can't quite see. No, I would have to read the text. Um, okay, we have quite a few still. Um, about UFOs, here you have a line graph and you have a bar chart, and that's pretty much the data. Oh, actually, there is there is a little um, a little scatter plot here. Let's see if I can zoom in. Yeah, um, that shows. Whoops. Oh, how many times a particular shape has been seen. Um, okay. In all of these, well, in most of these, there is always an attempt to really frame, literally frame the information. 
in this particular case, it's you know all these shapes of the, and then the title, and then the other at the bottom. So I think one should try to, um, yeah, try to have a, a kind of a structure that holds things together. Um, this is about art um, and uh, valuation of, and I think she was trying to look at over time. Let me see if I can move. Things are in the way here. There we go. Um, oh yeah, expected price versus what they actually fetched, I think. Anyway, it's a scatter plot with those two variables. Um, and the dots are um, it's actually the exact location of where those paints should be placed in terms of the two variables. Um, but what the person showed here was she showed that um, the size actually, I think originally she was trying to figure out if there was a relationship between the size of the painting and the cost of the painting. And so all these paintings are proportional to each other in terms of their size. about a big BART strike that went on some years ago. And uh, I think at the time people were surprised to learn that BART employees make a lot of money. <laughs> um, and I think here the illustrative element is that, you know, basically these horizontal bands trying to recall the motif of, you know, the tracks and the fact that BART does go horizontally on the ground. Um, sometimes you can do a little story. You can tell a story by literally guiding the viewer through, um, through the poster. Um, to grab my highlight tool again. And so this student, um, she tried to basically ask questions and then answer them. And I think it sort of moved in this way, like that, like that, and like that. So sometimes you can use even like, you know, the three little dots, the ellipses to, um, to you know, to say, okay, I'm not quite done yet. Let's, um, let's continue. Right. Uh, this is about drugs and um, symmetry plays a big part. I'm actually old school in that sense too, that I sometimes I really love symmetry. And when you have things that are centered and balanced left and right, not always of course, but um, in this particular case, it seemed to work. And one other of my favorite ones. Uh, this is basically a bubble chart. Um, let's see where, yeah. So it's a bubble chart, however, the real, it's about uh, audio formats and how many songs fit in a particular medium, let's say, you know, a, a record, which is, you know, the LP or long playing record vinyl record, which had what, um, I forget. Oops, sorry about that. Okay. Um, well, let's just say there's a nice timeline at the top on the evolution of all the various formats. The iPods, which doesn't exist anymore, but um, for a while that was, you know, the big thing. And um, and so the bubbles are really these gray uh, bubbles showing by size how many trucks actually fit. So, for example, in a mini CD, you could fit 
extracts, let's see, and then 50 through. Um, yeah, and on a record player, you could fit 11. On an eight track, well, you could fit eight. <laughs> um, so the data is shown by the bubbles, okay? Whereas the format, of course, oops, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the actual physical format, of course, can vary a lot. Um, now, some formats like the uh, iPod, I think it's this one. iPod Classic, um, oh yeah, 40,000. So this was iPod Classic, this was a real hard drive, 40,000 tracks. Um, and it's shown, that data is shown by, um, by this big circle right here, which goes off the, off the chart, off the poster, because it didn't fit. Now, what we noticed somehow, I don't know how, I think it was just a guess, when she drew this big circle, I said, hmm, I wonder if that big circle, that area of that big circle is similar to the poster. And it turns out it was super, super close. And so here she wrote a little, a little, explanation showing that in fact the poster is about itself is about 40,000 uh, tracks um, and if you go back and look at the at the very first format which was the wax cylinder it shows that there is one track so you can see that even one is quite a big item and it's quite visible um, compared to 40,000 so there is the same the equivalent of this 40,000 little dots like this would fill, if they were turned into little squares, would fit exactly the poster. So that was a nice bonus of this, um, of this exploration. Um, and again, I'm usually not a fan of uh, uh, pictorializing graphs. Uh, because they usually distract or making them 3D because they usually distract from the actual data. But in this case, because it's left in the background, the, the uh, wings of the wings, I guess what you call them. I don't know. I'm just not sure they're called wings of the, of the wind, wind, um, windmills uh, seem to work pretty well. Uh, one on bike sharing in the United States and the world. And um, let's see, this particular graph, which just shows a point A and point B, point A in time, A and B, um, it shows increases and decreases. The United States going down. <laughs> the um, Oh, actually, it's about emissions. Yeah, okay, so that's good. <laughs> um, so 1997, 2010, going up, going down. Um, I just want to point out once more this idea that you can use the um, angle of the um, italic typeface. In other words, without distorting the typeface, you can use that to the advantage. And in this case, the tilt see if I can show it. The tilt, oops, too much. The tilt of the italic, which is pretty much this, right? Can be used to, can be moved, or rather the type can be angled, but not the type itself, just the box, so that now the type is going off at an angle a little bit, but it's basically straightening the tilt of the italic type without deforming the type so that you essentially have now ty italic type that looks straight but it's going off at a slight angle in terms of its baseline so it's a really nice way to make to use an overused word <laughs> dynamic you know it's somehow dynamic typography uh, let's see.
this is from maybe the second year so this is maybe eight years ago and it was about this strange club called the 27 club these are musicians that um died at the age of 27 either through suicide overdose or other freak accidents um And again, sometimes photography does have a place. Um, yeah, we're actually getting closer to, this is the very, very first class. I think this is fall 2009 and it's about the civil war. These posters were quite big. These were 34 by 44. They were done in such a way that you could then fold them down to uh, using this grid format down to a uh, basically almost like a brochure or a map and uh, so they had to be designed in such a way that the back cover when folded and the front cover were in these in these two pages um, right here so you can see this would be the back cover with the colophon and this would be the front cover <clears throat> Another one with an historical event, the Kent State shootings in 1970. And one where the bars, in this case, the buildings do in fact look like the thing themselves. So obviously this contradicts my earlier statement about don't pictorialize or don't embellish or anthropomorphize the data, uh, the graphs. Uh, but in this case, I think it works quite well. And this really doesn't show any data. It's really a timeline of sorts. Um, uh, the class has evolved to a more, yeah, data, data driven in terms of really having always some kind of spreadsheet, some kind of data set that's being used. Um, Okay, so this set is actually smaller posters, and I can't remember if this was the wild card or the smaller poster, the 17 by 22 poster. I think this is one of them. Um, this is about the Android system and different, different tree maps showing um, different shares of the market and a really nice timeline, which I also put in my, um, in my, um, handbook um, to show that you got to keep your timelines uh, with your tick marks really always the same and because maybe nothing much is happening for a while but then things start to get you know busier and of course you're gonna have trouble fitting everything in but you can use these little devices to get around that okay so it's really important that the events fit within the timeline but the timeline itself the markings are always the same distance with the years perhaps highlighted um, talking about symmetry again quite quite uh, complex and filled and dense and yet you know you know exactly um, what's going on um, between um, these two guys who I forget what the statistics are now, but at this point, this is the chase between Feather and Sampras. I guess Feather was chasing Sampras. Um, you can write the actual data on top of the bars sometimes, and that's, you know, that can be useful. Um, and here it doesn't compete too much with it either because it's just simple helvetica light okay this might be useful for some of the elections uh, graphics that we might be doing um, at the end of this semester um, it was an interesting idea which was showing that if every person in every country were given a football field of land would there be any left in that country for something else? 
And it turns out that in most countries, there's a lot of land left. The biggest spread, of course, is Russia, which is huge. And even the United States, only 14% of the, uh, of the land would be taken up if every person got uh, a football field of land. Now, some countries you can see India actually don't have quite enough. Some countries, basically, it's exactly right, uh, 100%. And, um, and so here, the nice thing is the color really shows, you know, what's extra and what's, um, and what's you know, in defect. Um, when you do a, uh, a key for these um, type of bubble charts, always do them with round numbers and always do them um, just uh, with an outline without filling them, filling the key so that it looks kind of neutral. Uh, this was a poster, a small poster. This was another small poster, and a case in which a particular chunk of a particular bar was enlarged to show, um, again, the granular division of that of that uh, split. Uh, this was a wildcard project, and it was a little a little booklet about sea level rising and each page um, actually was smaller than the other so these are the edges of each page so when you open them um, you can see the first page just moved to the left the second page to the left and it gives information about that particular graph that's revealed by the page that's flipped um, really really nice piece um, and then the rest is just a regular uh, booklet so let's look at that again so if you were closing the pages there you would go back to the very first and this is settled stitch so it just means it's got a couple of stitches with your regular stapler although at home it's a little bit trickier um, but I can show you a way to do it if you need to do a settled stitch, so-called um, bound booklet. And we're getting close to the end here. This was another poster perhaps done for the, um, for the wildcard project about Facebook in, let's see, when was this? Uh, 2012, yeah, way back. Um, yeah, I think these were still when the total count was less than a billion, but obviously it's much more now. Um, a nice scatter plot that, yeah, it's about dinosaurs and the size of dinosaurs and I think the weight, let me see. Um, the height is on the left and oh the length yeah so the the height the, the the variable on the left is the height and the variable on the bottom is the length and uh, the size of the bubble so in other words each bubble is placed at that spot so this particular guy the supersaurus was a hundred feet long about 70 feet tall and he weighed let's see weighed about a hundred thousand pounds okay um and uh it's nice because it looks like a cross section of the hill where perhaps this might be you know little giant fossils see how she showed one of the fossils there And this may be the very last item, which was a big timeline of the Airbus A380. And yeah, again, the timeline here, not too much happens at the beginning, but then of course things get more busy. Um, yeah, that's it, that's the end. So I will quickly do a, a backward zoom as it were let's see if we can do that and um, through the years so yeah 
So again, this was either the wild card of the small poster. This was a booklet from the wild card. Um, some smaller posters, 17 by 22. Larger poster, big, big posters from 2009. This is really big, 34 by 44, which again breaks down to eight and a half by 11. And, and then they got smaller, 230 by 40. Different styles. So I hope that this inspires you to do, you know, um, again, in other words, that I don't like creativity because, you know, it's we talk about this as if it's something that can be, oh, that everybody can just uh, do. But in fact, a lot of this is work. There's a lot of, well, there's a perspiration, as they say, and much, much less inspiration. So it's very important that you, um, uh, sure, apply your interest and your, and, your, and your particular likings as to types of illustrations and particular angles. But at the same time, you'll notice that in a lot of these, the data really plays the big, bigger role and it defines more or less, in a sense, the style of the posters. Um, one thing that perhaps I should mention is that you could have a great style and an even incredibly tight layout and typographic organization. But if the data sets, I mean, the, the graphs were wrong or, or inappropriate to the particular data set, um, you know, the whole thing would not be very good. Okay, so we're going to go back to the very last or the most recent one from the spring of 2020, when the thing that we're still in right now started. And uh, that was that. So thank you very much. And I hope this inspires your uh, final project for fall 2020, which is the either, again, a, a poster or a booklet. Thank you. <laughs>